And if you're tuning in to the service this evening, we give you a very, very warm word of welcome. And we do pray that as we meet together tonight that the Lord will come and meet with us around his precious word. We do thank you indeed for tuning in and we pray that the Lord will meet with us tonight. If you have your Bible with you, please turn just before we open in a word of prayer. Open the Bible at 2 Chronicles chapter 28. We're going to read a verse at the end of the chapter and then we're going to read a verse at the beginning of chapter 29 this evening. That's 2 Chronicles chapter 28. And with God's word open before us at this portion of Scripture, let us bow in prayer and let us seek the Lord's face as we come into his presence tonight. Let us all pray. Father in heaven, we do thank thee and praise thee this evening for all thy mercies to us. We thank the Lord that we're found again in the house of God, the living to praise thee. We thank thee for an open Bible before us. And, O oh God, how we thank thee and praise thee for thy word. We know, Lord, that it's the entrance of thy word that giveth light. And, O oh God, we pray as we would study the scriptures of truth this evening, that you might have a word in season for all of our hearts. We thank thee, Lord, for everyone that's tuning in. And, O oh God, we pray that you'll bless every family, Lord, in our congregation. We think especially of the elderly tonight those that are sick and shut in. We pray, Lord, that you would encourage them, that you would bless them, that you would touch them, that they might know, Lord, the healing hand of God upon them. And Lord, we pray for every family in our church, Lord, that in these days that you would meet us all at the very point of our need. We thank thee for the Lord Jesus Christ, who is our Savior, who is our Redeemer. And, O oh God, we do pray that you would help us to live for thee, even in this our day and generation. Lord, we do pray for our land. We ask the Lord that you would send us a breath of revival. O oh God, that you would move by your gracious Holy Spirit. And O oh God, that you would open up the windows of heaven again and pour us out such a blessing that there would not be room enough to receive it. We pray for our missionaries tonight. We think especially of the land of Kenya. We ask thee, O oh God, that you would remember that land especially. And O oh God, remember your servants who labor there O oh God, we pray that you'll protect them, and Lord, that they might know in a very special way that underneath and round about are the everlasting arms. So come and meet with us now, Lord. We pray, O oh God, as we turn to thy precious word, that you might speak to all of our hearts, even this night, for us in Jesus' precious name we ask it. Amen. Second Chronicles chapter 28. I want to read verse 27, and then the first verse of chapter 29. And Ahaz slept with his fathers, and they buried him in the city, even in Jerusalem, but they brought him not into the sepulchres of the kings of Israel. And Hezekiah his son reigned in his stead. Hezekiah began to reign when he was five and twenty years old, and he reigned nine and twenty years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Abijah, the daughter of Zechariah. And then the first part of verse 2 says, And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. Amen. We know the Lord will add his own blessing to the reading, the public reading of his precious word to all of our hearts. Hezekiah, of course, was the king of Judah. You remember after the death of Solomon, Israel was divided up into two nations. There was the northern kingdom, and then there was the southern kingdom. The southern kingdom was the kingdom of Judah, or the nation of Judah. Now, when you study the kings of Judah, you learn very quickly that Hezekiah was the godliest king that ever sat on the throne of Judah. If you take the time to read 2 Kings chapter 18, verse 5, that text of Scripture will reveal that truth to you. Hezekiah came, of course, to the throne after the death of his father Ahaz. And Ahaz was a very wicked and ungodly man. Indeed, when you study the history of the kings of Judah, 
you learn that Hezekiah was a good son of an evil king, and he was a good father of an evil king, because both Hezekiah's father and his son after him, who were kings of Judah, of course, were wicked and ungodly men. Therefore, when Hezekiah came to the throne of Judah, he was a breath of fresh air to the nation, because Hezekiah was a godly man, and the Lord raised him up, and the Lord blessed him in so many different ways. Now, over these next number of weeks in the will of the Lord at our Bible study on a Tuesday night, we're going to consider some facts about Hezekiah and his reign over the nation of Judah. And I pray that as we study Hezekiah, the good and godly king of Judah, that the Lord will bless all of our hearts. I believe that there is a word of encouragement, not only tonight, but throughout these studies for the people of God, for the child of God. And I pray, dear believer, that you will tune in each Tuesday evening, and as we open up the Word of God and consider this godly man, that the Lord will bless your heart and that the Lord will bless your soul. Now, tonight, very simply, I want to draw your attention to the meaning of Hezekiah's name. And I want us to consider how the meaning of his name was demonstrated in Hezekiah's life. Hezekiah's name means, whom the Lord helps, or the Lord is my helper. Isn't that a tremendous name? And when you study the life and reign of King Hezekiah, you soon discover that he was a survivor. And of course, the reason why Hezekiah was a survivor was because throughout his life, from beginning to end, the Lord was his help. And that's what I want to draw your attention to very simply tonight as an introductory message to this series of messages on the life and times of Hezekiah. And I pray, as I have emphasized already, dear child of God, that the Lord will encourage your heart tonight. We live in evil days. We live in hard times. But thank God there is one who is our helper. There's one who is our deliverer, even Hezekiah's God. And I pray tonight that the Lord will take His Word and strengthen your heart and strengthen your soul, dear child of God, and build you up in your most holy faith. Let us look at how the Lord helped Nehemiah in his times of need throughout his life. Now, it's impossible to draw your attention to every incident in Hezekiah's life when the Lord helped him. But I just want to pick out three of them this evening, and I pray it will be a blessing to your heart. First of all, I want you to notice that when Hezekiah was a child, he escaped the murderous, idle practices of his father. Turn back a few pages to Second Chronicles chapter 28, and look at verse 3 for a moment. As we have said before, Hezekiah's father was an ungodly king. Indeed, Ahaz was so wicked and so evil that he sacrificed many of his own children after the practices of the heathen. And in Second Chronicles 28 and verse 3, we learn this truth. It's a very sad verse, but take a look at it. Moreover, he that was Ahaz, Hezekiah's father, he burnt incense in the valley of the son of Hinnom and burnt his children in the fire after the abominations of the heathen. My, it was the practice of idolatrous worship for the Perns to sacrifice their own children to Baal and to other false gods. And that's what we learn here. And this practice was, of course, an abomination to God, as you would expect. But Ahaz, Hezekiah's father, was so caught up in this evil corruption that he sacrificed many of his own children to these heathen gods. But the truth that I want you to see here tonight, and I believe it's a wonderful truth when we come to consider Hezekiah. God in mercy spurred Hezekiah and delivered him from instant death when he was a child. When Hezekiah was a child, even before he was born again of the Spirit of God and saved by the grace of God, the Lord had His hand 
upon him, and the Lord helped him, and the Lord delivered him. Humanly speaking, Hezekiah uh, could not have saved himself at this time, but the Lord intervened, and the Lord stepped in, and the Lord helped him. That's a wonderful truth there that we learn even in the early days of Hezekiah's life. The Lord was keeping His hand upon him. You know, dear child of God, isn't the truth this, that even before you and I were saved, the Lord had His hand upon us right from the very moment we were born. And although before we were saved and born again of the Spirit of God, we lived for the world and we lived in the pleasures of sin, isn't it truth that the Lord had His hand upon us right from the very moment we were born into this world? We can say like Hezekiah, even when we were children, the Lord helped us and the Lord delivered us. But there's something else I want you to notice here. I want you to turn to 2 Chronicles chapter 32 for a moment, because I want you to notice, secondly, when Hezekiah was king, he and the nation of Judah were delivered from an attack by the great armies of Sennacherib, king of Assyria. Now, I don't want to go into this passage in great detail this evening, because we'll be looking at this story again in these studies in more detail. But I just want to say this. It was an impossible situation here that Hezekiah and the children of Judah found themselves in, in 2 Chronicles chapter 32. Because in this portion of Scripture, Sennacherib's army had surrounded Jerusalem. And of course, Sennacherib was the great power, world power at that time. And he had decided to come and destroy Israel and Judah, and he had surrounded Jerusalem. And humanly speaking, there was absolutely nothing that Hezekiah could do. But I want you to notice that in the midst of this situation, what Hezekiah said and of course, we know that Hezekiah prayed and brought the matter before the Lord. The Bible tells us that he spread the matter before the Lord. And he recognized that there was only one who could help him in this situation, and of course, that was the Lord. But notice what Hezekiah said to the nation at this time. Look at verses 7 and 8 of Second Chronicles chapter 32. Hezekiah said this, "'Be strong and courageous,' Be not afraid nor dismayed for the king of Assyria, nor for all the multitude that is with him, for there be more with us than with him. Now underline verse 8. With him is an arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us. Won't you underline that last little phrase there? I wonder, was Hezekiah thinking about the meaning of his name when he spoke those words? the Lord is my helper. Here, Hezekiah, as he faces this great enemy, he declares to the nation that the Lord will help him and help the nation, and that the Lord will fight our battles. And then look what it says at the end of verse 8, and the people rested themselves upon the words of Hezekiah, king of Judah. In other words, Hezekiah trusted in the Lord because he knew that although humanly speaking, that Sennacherib's army was far greater than the men of Judah, he knew that the Lord would intervene and that the Lord would help them. You know, child of God, the Lord is our divine helper. Let us never forget that. And I pray that if you remember nothing from this message tonight, that you will remember the meaning of Hezekiah's name the Lord is my helper. And that we will always remember that in our own lives, day by day, that there's one who is always by our side, one who is there to help us, to deliver us, to strengthen us in whatever circumstances we are found. And maybe I'm speaking to a dear child of God this evening, and you're in a deep valley. Your back is against the wall, you feel that no one cares for you, and you feel that no one can help you in your present situation. Well, let me tell you tonight 
that there's one dear child of God who is your helper, who is your deliverer, who will strengthen you in whatever situation you're found. And that one is your Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to what the psalmist said in Psalm 28, verse 7. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusteth in Him, and I am helped. Therefore my heart greatly rejoiceth, and my song will and with my song I will praise him. Listen to Psalm 40, verse 17. But I was poor and needy, the psalmist said, yet the Lord thinketh upon me, thou art my help and my deliverer. Make no tarrying, O my God. And listen to what the prophet Isaiah said in Isaiah 41, verse 10. For thou not, fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Oh, thank God there's one that we can lean on, no matter what our circumstances in life may be, no matter how deep the valleys may become. Praise God, there's one who has promised that he will never leave us nor forsake us. And the Lord will keep his hand upon us and be our help throughout our lives until our lives are over and until our race is run. Here we have a wonderful example in the Bible of how the Lord helped His servant throughout his life. And you know, there's another wonderful incident in the life of Hezekiah where he knew the help of the Lord. And they're very quickly going through these examples, but I pray that they'll be a blessing to all of our hearts this evening. Turn over in in the Bible to 2 Kings chapter 20. Now, in this portion of Scripture, we notice that when Hezekiah was sick unto death, the Lord spurred him for another 15 years. Now, this is a most interesting, unique passage of God's precious, precious Word. Hezekiah was on his deathbed here. In fact, when you read the passage of Scripture, you read that God had told Hezekiah through the prophet to set his house in order because he was going to die. Take a look there at verse 1 of 2 Kings chapter 20. In those days, Hezekiah was sick unto death, and the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then he turned, that was Hezekiah, turned his face to the wall, and prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart, and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. So here we have Hezekiah, and he's facing death, and he cries unto God to spare his life, and he weeps before the Lord, and he asks the Lord to spare him. And then look what happens. My, it's tremendous how the Lord answered Hezekiah's prayer in a most unique way. Look at verse 4. And it came to pass, afore Isaiah was gone out into the middle court, that the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Turn again, and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, Thus saith the Lord, the God of thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. On the third day thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord, and I will add unto thy days fifteen years. Isn't that a tremendous portion of Scriptures? The Lord heard his prayer. The Lord saw his tears. And when Hezekiah was on a bed of sickness, the Lord helped him. And the Lord raised him to full health and strength again and spared his life for another 15 years. Oh, dear child of God, what great encouragement we have here through the precious Word of God and through the life of Hezekiah. The truth is this. The Lord hears the prayers of His people. His ear is ever open unto our cry. And thank God, Prayer time is not wasted time. And maybe you are in a deep valley tonight, and maybe your back is against the wall, and maybe you feel that there's no help for you in any quarter. Oh, thank the Lord there is help 
for you in the Lord tonight. And dear child of God, I would encourage you to turn to the Lord in prayer and to seek the face of your God, for there's no knowing what the Lord will do for you personally in your own personal experience is if you cry unto Him and wait upon the Lord. Therefore, in His time of sickness, the Lord helped him. You know, the Lord's hand was upon Hezekiah for good. What a blessing we have here when we read and study the life of this godly man. And again, let me draw your attention to what the psalmist said when he thought about the goodness of God in the land of the living. Psalm 121 and verse 1 to 3, we read these words, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. And we read over there in Psalm 46 verse 1, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in the time of need. Oh, what a wonderful, what a wonderful truth we have here set before us tonight. It's a very simple truth, dear child of God, a very simple truth, but it's a very wonderful truth. Don't forget the meaning of Hezekiah's name. As I have said, if you remember nothing else from the message tonight, remember the meaning of Hezekiah's name. The Lord is my helper. Hasn't the Lord helped us throughout our lives? Hasn't the Lord up until this point in our lives kept His good hand upon us? He has helped us more than we'll ever, ever know. Right from the day we were born, right until this present time, hasn't the Lord been good to each and every one of us? And that's why we ought to lift up our hearts, and we ought to praise the Lord day by day for all His goodness and mercy to us. You see, the devil would want to keep us in the valley of despair. And I fear that there are many of God's people uh, tonight, and they're living in the valley of despair. Oh, dear child of God, that's where the devil wants to keep us. The Lord doesn't want us to live in the valley of despair. The, the, the Lord wants us to live on the mountain top of victory. And thank God there is victory in Jesus, my Savior, forever. And praise God tonight, the one who has kept us, and the one who has preserved us, and the one who has helped us from the moment we were born right to this present day, is the one who will help us tomorrow, and the one who will help us next month, and the one who will keep His hand upon us until we come to the end of our lives. And even when we come to the end of our lives, He'll still help us, because He'll be there in the valley of the shadow of death. His presence will be with us, helping us and bring, to bring us safely home to the glory land, because He has promised that He will never leave us nor forsake us. We often sing that lovely hymn. Let me quote just a couple of verses. O God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast, and our eternal home. O God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, be Thou our guide while troubles last, and our eternal home. Oh, what a wonderful hymn that is. But let us remember the truth that it contains, that the God who has saved us and the God who has kept us is the one who will continue to uphold us with His arms day by day, as we seek to live for Him. There's a wonderful text of Scripture. Indeed, I want you to turn over to it in the Bible. It's found over in Acts, and it's the chapter 26. And of course, it's the Apostle Paul here under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, and he's speaking. And on this occasion, he's giving his testimony before King Agrippa. But it's interesting to note what the Apostle Paul said in the midst of his testimony, as he thought about his life. is not what we have been considering tonight. Very quickly, we have been considering the life of Hezekiah, how the Lord helped him at his birth. He spurred his life when his father was killing all 
his brothers and sisters and sacrificing him in the fire. The Lord helped him in the midst of the battle when Sennacherib came. The Lord helped him when he was in sickness, about to die. Oh, the Lord kept his hand upon him. And that's the testimony of every saint of God. Listen to what Paul said in Acts chapter 26, verse 21 and 22. For these causes the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. And we know when we study the life of the Apostle Paul that there were many times when the Jews sought to kill him. Indeed, on one occasion, they had stoned him and they left him for dead. But of course, he wasn't dead. But this is what Paul said in verse 22. Underline it. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue unto this day, witnessing both to small and great, saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come, that Christ should suffer. Oh, as Paul went about serving the Lord, preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, although there were many times when he when danger came his way, and the old devil always made sure that danger came Paul's way. Never forget this, dear child of God, that the Lord was with him. The Lord was helping him. And the wonderful truth is this, that the Lord's hand is upon us and will be upon us until our work for God upon this earth is over. Until our race is run, no one will stop us from doing the work of God and living for the Lord until the Lord brings us home to heaven and to home. How many times has the Lord delivered us when our backs have been against the wall? When we have been in tight situations, isn't the truth? Isn't the truth this? that we can look back over our lives and we can testify to the good hand of the Lord upon us. The Lord has helped us. The Lord has helped us even today from we have got up out of our bed right to this very moment. Dear child of God, never forget the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And as I have said, thank God, until our race is run, the Lord will continue to help us in every possible situation. The meaning of Hezekiah's name, the Lord is my helper. And you and I can testify to that this evening. We can say also that the Lord is our helper. But I wonder, am I speaking to someone, just before I close the message tonight, am I speaking to someone here and you're not saved? I know that many listen in to these uh, streamlined services. And maybe you're listening tonight and you're not saved yet. You're not born again of the Spirit of God. My friend, hasn't the Lord kept His hand upon you and been gracious to you up until this very moment? Or would you not acknowledge that tonight? And would you not come and put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as your own and personal Savior? Because remember this, not only will the Christian die, but you will die. But remember this, that when you come to face death, if you're not saved, if you're not trusting the Lord Jesus Christ as your helper, as your deliverer, there'll be no help for you in the great eternity. The Bible tells us very clearly that the judgment of God someday will fall upon this earth. The Bible says that God hath appointed a day in the which He will judge the world in righteousness. And I believe that very soon Jesus Christ will come again. And I believe all the signs are pointing to the second coming of Christ. We're getting near the end. That's why it's imperative for you to be ready and to be saved when the judgment of God falls upon this earth. Because if you're not saved, the Lord will not help you. The Lord will not be your helper. The Lord will not be your deliverer. But rather, you will receive the wrath and judgment of God. And I say that lovingly. But my friend, that's why you need to come to Christ. Thank God the one who was Hezekiah's helper and deliverer and savior, he can be your deliverer and helper and savior even tonight. I pray that you will trust him as your own and personal redeemer and come and put your faith and trust in the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. Hezekiah, the godly king of Judah, his name means the Lord is my helper. 
Have you that personal faith in Jesus Christ tonight? Is the Lord Jesus Christ your helper, your deliverer, your Savior, your rock? Oh, I pray if He's not, that you'll trust Him now. May God bless these few thoughts to your heart tonight. Let us all pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank Thee and we praise Thee this evening for the precious Word of God. We thank Thee, Lord, for this man, Hezekiah, the godly king of Judah. And although he was brought up under an ungodly father, and although his son after him lived an ungodly life, Hezekiah lived for Thee. Oh God, help us, those of us who are saved, help us to live for Thee. No matter how anyone else lives, even in our own family circles, Lord, no matter how anyone else lives, help us to live for Thee and to serve Thee. You took Hezekiah up, and you used him in a mighty way to, to deliver uh, Judah from idolatrous worship. Oh God, I pray in these days that you'd be pleased to bless the preaching of Thy precious Word, and help us, Lord, to serve Thee. We thank Thee, Lord, for all Your help. Oh God, for Your hand upon us, even from the very moment we were born into this world, Lord, right to this very moment, Lord, we, we can testify that, that You've helped us, that You've been gracious and merciful to us. Help us not to forget about the goodness of God in the land of the living, even in these days, Lord, when there's so much uh, darkness and so much spiritual declension. Help us to thank Thee, Lord, and to praise Thee in these days for what Thou, the Lord our God, hath done for us. We'll never cease to praise Thee. We have a, a body out of the grave and a soul out of hell. We're on our way to heaven. Our sins are forgiven. Someday we're going to see the King in all His glory. And even, Lord, whatever circumstances we're found in life, the Lord is our help. Lord, bless Thy Word to every heart tonight and encourage your saints for us in Jesus' precious, precious name we ask it. Amen. Amen. <music>